Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. We've heard of netbooks, notebooks, and now there's something called an ultrabook. So the idea behind an ultrabook is that you don't have to choose between a desktop replacement and that ultra-thin MacBook Air kind of computer. When you say ultra-thin MacBook Air kind of computer, you mean form factor or...? or form, form factor. The... The 11 inch size, very thin, you know, under two pounds kind of computer. It's a good computer, especially with the recent round of upgrades. Right. And, and ample power with an i5 processor, instant on, it's fast. Right. Even Jake's considering getting a, a Mac at this point because of that. Right. And, but, you know, if I'm a hardcore Windows guy, why do I have to choose? I ought to be able to get a MacBook Air from. Dell, that would be the same thing, or from HP. Well, you do from... realize you could run Windows on a Mac by using Boot Camp and being a native. have the right click, and there wouldn't be a nice little Windows logo. Yes, yes you, uh, on the... you can't have a right click, uh, just so you know, A, and B, you wouldn't have the Windows logo yet. You, you are correct, you would not have, so you want the Windows logo. <laughs> so, uh, th these, are, these are a series of computers, portable computers, powered by Intel, it's basically a new class of computers, and but how? What? What is it? What it, is it replacing? So it's it's really the idea. And a large portion of it is that Thunderbolt is making some of this stuff possible. Like more and more devices are being put onto the PCIe, so you don't need as many chips in the in the motherboard, so that you can have more things just embedded on there. You, you know. And as Intel's getting better at combining things into chips, you're getting smaller wireless cards, you're getting you know smaller hard drive controllers because of these things, and so you're just able to build a thinner, lighter computer that's fast. That's fast yeah. because you can that's still run key. you can still run things like the i5 and the i7 that support dynamic clocking, so they can run very low power modes when they aren't being used and they still have the ability to burst up and by putting them in a nice big aluminum enclosure the whole thing's a heat sink and life's just kind of you know happy we're getting to where we should have been you know it's netbooks were always great because you could take them anywhere right but they sucked because you couldn't play a game you couldn't really watch a movie they on were some of the early ones they like, were underpowered. Wildly underpowered right and Everyone loves the, you know, eight hours of battery life, and that's now starting to be possible in more powerful computers. So, as Jake had pointed out before the video, it's kind of like the closest thing, well, at least the MacBook Air, and maybe specifically these uh, Ultrabooks, uh, like an iPad that has a keyboard and more power. Right, and I... M uh, minus the touch capability. Well, and some of these Ultrabooks will have touch capability. Oh, really? Is that... That's hardware supported? Is it? Uh, uh, that, that's a display thing. Uh, Fujitsu has announced that they're going to have a touch supported. When they say touch, Ultrabook. capacitive, resistive. Ca capacitive. Uh, Fujitsu has led the the space in tablets for for years. I had a Fujitsu tablet in two thousand and four, and yeah, but... it it wasn't quite the same, and it didn't have the experience, but it was still a very nice device, and it was. You know, honestly, I. Until I had touched a capacitive screen, I did not get it. I didn't get it because it was just so much of a kludge. So if I see the word resistive, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. Th this, you had to use a stylus, but it was still very nice for some of the stuff that I used to do back then. All right, so this is the possibly the next big thing. I, I think Ultrabooks are the next big thing. 